Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. This video is a first look at OtterBlocks Pro from Theme Isle. Theme Isle has the distinction of having two top tier themes. Both Neve and Hestia are in the top 10 free themes on WordPress.org. When you install any Theme Isle theme, you're prompted to install OtterBlocks, the free version. And today, OtterBlocks has more than 100,000 active installs. Recently, Theme Isle has released a pro version of OtterBlocks that brings a number of new features. And concurrent with the release of OtterBlocks Pro is a new theme from Theme Isle called Raft. An interesting thing about Raft is that it's a block based theme that supports the full site editor. And OtterBlocks Pro, in addition to being usable for regular post content, can also be used in the full site editor. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to take a quick look at OtterBlocks Pro and the new Raft theme. If you like the video, please subscribe. It helps to spread the word about the channel. This is the free version of OtterBlocks in the WordPress plugin directory. As you can see, it has more than 100,000 active installs. It has 98 five-star reviews and an overall rating of four and a half stars. And 11 out of 18 support issues have been resolved in the last two months. The new Raft theme is going to be available from the WordPress theme directory, but it hasn't been accepted yet. So you'll need to download it from the Theme Isle website. I think it's kind of attractive. You have some global styles from full site editor templates and block patterns. The pro version of OtterBlocks, you purchase it also from Theme Isle. If we look at the plans, $39 a year for one site, $99 for five sites, or $149 for unlimited sites. So I have a testing site here, got some demo data. And if we go to the back end, I have a custom post type called Books. And I'm going to open that in another tab. If we look at one of the book records, we see that in addition to the regular fields, the title, the content featured image, there's also a custom taxonomy and two custom fields linked to the author's website and the author's photo. Okay. If we look at plugins, you'll see that I have advanced custom fields and custom post type UI installed. I use those to create the custom post type, all in one migration for backing up and restoring the site. And then I have the free version of OtterBlocks and the pro version. And this is one of those plugins where with pro you have to have free installed also. There's a settings menu for Otter and they have some modules. The way Otter works is that many of the features are available in both free and pro, but you have much more extensive, a greater range of the features in pro than you do in free. So they have a custom CSS module, a blocks animation module, and a visibility condition module. There's this option to make the Otter section block your default for pages, optimize animation CSS, enable rich schema, Use the one to five scale for your stars in the review block and turn on anonymous data tracking. If you want to, you can regenerate styles. There's Google maps integration because they have a maps block. You can save Google fonts locally pro feature and there's some form blocks and you can set up Google recaptcha to work with those. Let's just go to a page. Take a quick look at what blocks come with the plugin. They're down at the bottom. So there's some container blocks, a section, tabs, accordion. There's a masonry and post block for outputting uh, multiple records. There are standard blocks like heading, button, flip card, icon icon list. There's a circle counter and a countdown block. There's a form, a contact form, a subscribe form. There's a Google Maps and then an OpenStreetMaps block as well. 
So this is interesting because the OpenStreetMaps maybe don't look quite as nice as the Google Maps, but they don't require you signing up in advance for an API. There's a plugin card. It's interesting. You want to see the information about a plugin from WordPress.org. And there are some kind of business e-commerce product review, pricing section, pricing, service testimonial, business hours, product review comparison table. Okay, so those are some of the blocks. We're going to go into the full site editor and use some of these to create a template. So I won't add them to the canvas just yet, but there is one more Otter Blocks option here. When you're in the editor, these are pretty much the same options you had in the settings area. But then here you can go in and customize these blocks and make them kind of global so that when you add them to the canvas, then they'll have your customizations preset. That's kind of the quick tour. Let's go to Appearance and Themes. I'm going to activate Raft. And I already have Otter installed. If I didn't, we'd get that prompt to install it. And let's just look on the front end real quick. See, this is what it looks like. Now let's go and dive into the site editor. We'll go to Templates. And you see I have an archive book template and a single book template. Those aren't normally available, your templates for custom post types, but there's a kind of a workaround. I created an empty archive book HTML file, an empty single book HTML file, and put them in the Raft templates directory. This is something you can do with block-based themes. Once you do that, then blank template shows up here, and you can use that to create the template for your custom post type. I'm not going to go through the whole process of archive and single. Since this is a first look, I'm just going to do the single. And the way that the full site editor works is that you need to manually add your header and footer to every template. And I guess that gives you flexibility because you can have different ones for different templates. But I think eventually they'll have some global options like we have with most page builders. Now I'm going to add the Otter section block in the middle. Then below that I'll add the footer. This is kind of the basic starting setup. And I'm going to click on the section and let's go to spacing and we'll give it some top and bottom margin so it's not right up against the header. We're going to add an image block for the featured image here. And we're going to go to the media library. You notice there's no option to click dynamic data here. But if we go to the media library, this is the way that Otter is handling dynamic images, is they have a tab in the media library. So you have the option for featured image, the post author image, a user image, website logo, post meta, a WooCommerce product, or an ACF image. So we're just going with featured image. I'm going to set the width to be 180 and the height to be 260. Okay, and then over here, we will add the advanced heading block. You look and you say, no option here to select dynamic data. How do I select dynamic data here? There are two ways. This is the first one. You can do this little down arrow. There's dynamic link and dynamic value. And so we'll do post title. Okay. Then Below that, we're going to add our post meta. And now here's an interesting feature. We'll see the second way to add dynamic data. Go published on. And if you put in a percent sign, then you bring up a list of some common dynamic data fields. So you can pick this one, or we can go up here and pick one from there as well, which has a more extensive list. But for right now, we can do dynamic date by and you notice it doesn't have the post author here, but we can get it then here, author name, apply. Oops, we gotta, 
can move that there. Then we can add the post content block, which is a core block. Okay, so this is our start. Let's save that. Let's go and look at a single record on the front end. I guess we'll choose this one. And this is what we have. Not too bad for a first shot, but we're full width here. And I guess we have a little extra space there. And we don't have any of the custom field showing. So let's go here and let's see. Margin bottom instead of 25, we'll make that 10. And then if we go to this section, you know, we can adjust the number of columns. We have spacing, which we use to set a top and bottom margin. There's section structure. Okay, and the section structure we can set content width. I think I'll try 980. And then when you put a width in, you get a horizontal alignment option so we can align it center. All right, so that's pretty good. Now, while we're here, I want to show you these visibility and animation options. Here are the rule options. You can do conditions for users, logged in, logged out, user roles, logged in, user meta, for posts, for URL query string, for date and time options, for WooCommerce options, and LearnDash options. So a pretty decent list there. And you can have more than one with an and, or, and, or condition. And then if we look at the animations, there are three types. There's loading animations. And there's backing, bouncing, fading, flipping, rotating, sliding, zooming, rolling, light speed and other, okay? So a big list there. Then there are counting animations and you use these with those counting blocks, for instance. And then there are typing animations and you'd use these with a text block. Those are the animation options. All right, so let's save and refresh our front end and see what we see. Okay, so that's looking much better. Now let's try and add our custom fields. Go here and actually, I guess I'll go here and do insert after. We're going to do an image block again. And Otter doesn't have its own, you know, it's extending the core image block, but they have this placeholders here. So I'm going to do ACF image and select author's photo. Okay, and we'll set the size of that, let's say 75 and 75. And then below that, let's add a button. And this is one of my suggestions for Otter, is their icons look very similar to Core. So you might not realize that this is the Otter version. Okay, so. And then this is where you do a regular link, but I want to do a dynamic link. And we're going to do an ACF custom field. And it's going to be this author's website. Okay. And then here I want to open in a new tab. Now let's save that. Refresh. Here are our custom fields. I guess we should center these. So it's this column here. I don't see an option to center this. Okay, we can click on the individual items and do a line center, but it doesn't do anything. I think maybe the, oh, we've got to click on that button group. Yeah. Okay, so the, the button will center. So there's kind of a way of centering these things. I'm going to insert before. And we're going to put in a core roadblock. And this is something fairly new they've added to core. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these, add these to the core roadblock. Let's, there we go. 
Okay, and then this row block has some flex options. So you can do row or stack. And so we're going to stack and now we have a justify center. And refresh. And there we go. Okay, so that's been a walkthrough. Now for some discussion and conclusions. There are just a couple of points I want to make. First is we've seen a fair number of block plugins now that have support for dynamic data. What makes this one a little different is that they released it with a block-based theme and they made it so that it works in the full site editor. So that's something unique, and that may be a trend we see in the future. Then another observation is that the OtterBlocks Pro is fairly full featured for a new release. So it's nice that it came out more or less fully baked, and it seems to work fairly well. So I'm interested to see if this catches on. Now for a long time, Theme Isle had a club membership that offered a lifetime option. They don't have that anymore, but there are many people who probably have access to Otter Pro. So those people should definitely just go ahead and check it out. And then for everyone else, I think you have to look and see how OtterBlocks Pro stacks up against whatever else you're using to see if the pricing works for you and if it would be something that you'd be interested in. Okay, so that's my walkthrough and discussion of OtterBlocks Pro and the new Raft theme. There's a text summary on the WebTNG website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. Hope you found this first look at OtterBlocks Pro interesting. Thank you for watching.